there are a lot of different things that can actually encourage autophagy within the body. Now, if you're watching this video, you might have stumbled across it because you're researching fasting or intermittent fasting and you want to learn about autophagy. But you might also be here simply because you're curious about what autophagy is and ways that you can improve it. You see, first and foremost, autophagy is very simple. Autophagy is just the body's way of implementing survival of the fittest. Basically, stronger cells end up consuming the weaker cells and it ends up just kind of leading to the circle of life of cells inside your body. Okay, so we're gonna break down foods that are going to boost autophagy, whether you are fasting or not. So if you're not fasting, these are foods that are still gonna help you out with autophagy, but if you are fasting, they might even exacerbate the positive effects or positive results of your fasting. Hey, you are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel with new videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time and a bunch of other videos in between. All right, so first off, let's talk about what happens with autophagy just at a surface level. There's actually three different kinds of autophagy. So basically autophagy gets activated upon different ways, but the most common way that autophagy is triggered is through the stimulation of what is called AMP protein kinase. So AMP protein kinase. Okay, AMP protein kinase is generated whenever we actually have to create energy from our own body, from our own storage. So let me just give you an example. Anytime you're running out of carbohydrate stores and your body has to actually use its own sources of fat or its own stored glycogen, it activates AMP. It activates a AMPK. So basically this AMPK is only activated when our body has to generate energy from itself. So when you're exercising or when you're fasting or when you're in a caloric deficit, all these things that obviously make really good sense from a longevity perspective. So when you're fasting, you have a high degree of AMPK that's getting activated because you're not eating. When you're working out, of course you're tapping into that. So all these things that are good for our health, right? Just general longevity. And I say that with a grain of salt. So autophagy is very complex, and we can look at it in different ways. And this video is not even going to scratch the surface of the world of autophagy. Honestly, I like to say that I know the body pretty well, but even the world of autophagy goes far beyond what I could ever know. This stuff is pretty extreme. So what I am going to do is I'm going to give you four foods that you can implement into your diet. You can implement them if you're fasting or not fasting, and they're going to help stimulate autophagy through different mechanisms. So let's go ahead and start with number one. The first one is going to be green tea and the main active ingredient is going to be EGCG, epigallocatechin 3 gallate which is very, very, very powerful when it comes down to autophagy. You see, there's a study that was actually published in the journal PLOS1, okay, and it found that green tea actually stimulated autophagy specifically in hepatic cells, so meaning in the liver. Now, this is very important. We want liver cells to go through a process of autophagy because liver cells are under a lot of stress anyway. So if we can stimulate good autophagy and survival of the fittest there, we can have a good, healthy liver. So what they found is it stimulated what's called an autophagic flux. This is basically just like it sounds. It's basically a flux of autophagosomes that go into the area when this compound is ingested. So EGCG literally causes basically a flux of autophagy to occur. Now the interesting thing is it encourages lipid breakdown. So it encourages fat cells to actually go through the autophagy process. Therefore, even helping lipolysis a little bit more. So we have fat burning occurring, but we also have fat cells that are going through the process of autophagy, becoming more efficient, allowing our body to either store them or use them easier, whatever is applicable at the time. So the way the EGCG or green tea actually helps with autophagy is by increasing, not activating, but increasing the production of AMPK. Okay, operative word there is increasing. It encourages the production of that. So it helps your body produce more of that AMPK if the cycle is already going. So if you're fasting or if you're working out, green tea beforehand is going to help boost autophagy. All right, now let's move into the next one. Next one's gonna be ginger. Ginger is very good when you're fasting because it's good on your stomach, but what about from the side of autophagy? You see, there's a component in ginger known as six shogol. It's a weird word. Basically, what it is is one of the more inactive ingredients of ginger. It's something that people don't focus on as much. But there was one particular study that did take a pretty big focus on 6 shogol. So this study was published in the Journal of Agriculture and Food Chemistry. And it took a look at the effects of this component of ginger, the 6 shogol, on non-small cell lung cancers. Okay, it was pretty interesting. So what they found is that it induced autophagic cell death, but not premature apoptosis. What that means, apoptosis is a premature cell death. You see, like autophagy is like a natural process that should be occurring. 
Apoptosis is a premature cell death, where a cell just kind of dies. Okay? So basically what they found is it encouraged the natural process of autophagy, but didn't encourage cells to die prematurely. In this particular case of cancer, basically we are allowing the cancer cells to get a little bit more, well, finely tuned. So basically, they're, rather than being just this erratic growing thing, it was a little bit more controlled. Therefore, being used in like adjunct to chemotherapy or other treatments, it could be very powerful. So the way that it did this is it blocked something known as AKT and it ended up blocking the downstream targets of AKT. Okay, so this is all complex, but basically what it means is it means that ginger has the ability to turn off a specific process that would normally trigger all kinds of anabolic responses with a cancer cell. We don't want the growth of cancer cells. So if we can turn off downstream targets and turn off the phosphorylation of mammalian target of rapamycin, mTOR, and also turn off the phosphorylation of P70S6K, basically what we do is we allow that lung cancer cell or that cell to not grow anymore. So we actually have some really strong potential with ginger. Now where this applies in terms of fasting is it just means that we're acting upon a different pathway. Fasting is already boosting your autophagy. Why not go ahead and add something that's gonna actually stop the downstream signaling of AKT and slow down the mTOR, slow down the uh, overall P67, SK6, and all that, that would normally cause a cell to grow or multiply. So in other words, we're stopping the process, making autophagy happen easier. Okay, which leads me into the next one, which is another cancer reference. But again, cancer cells, a lot of the research has been done on cancer cells because that's where autophagy is really important, at least as far as the research is concerned. Now we're talking about turmeric and curcumin. So the Journal of Pharmacological Science took a look at curcumin's effect on a specific A549 small cell lung carcinoma. Okay, what they wanted to find, again, was what the overall effect was when it came down to autophagy and it came down to the cancer cell in general. So what they found is that that turmeric curcumin markedly increased the activation of that AMP protein kinase. So basically, that AMPK. So we had a pretty big increase in the phosphorylation, in other words, kind of the activation of AMPK. Now, you remember from the beginning of this video that AMPK is very, very important with autophagy. And remember that green tea increased AMPK. Well, turmeric curcumin actually activates the phosphorylation of AMPK. So whereas green tea actually increases it, turmeric actually activates it. So you can see by combining turmeric and green tea when you're fasting, you could be in a really powerful situation to just boost autophagy. Now my, in no way, shape or form am I saying that fasting and these treatments or these foods are going to cure cancer. The studies are just done on cancer. It's a perfect example of where autophagosomes actually have a place. Which leads me into the next one, which is reishi mushroom. Okay, so reishi mushroom, kind of borderline if it would break a fast or not, but still consuming it even after you fast could be really, really powerful just because of its autophagic effects. So the Journal of Nutrition and Cancer did a study that was specifically looking at colon cancer cells, and they actually found that by adding some reishi mushroom into the mix, you could actually suppress the proliferation of these colon cancer cells. And it did this by suppressing the phosphorylation of what is called the P38 mitogen activated kinase. All right, a fancy way of saying another way that autophagy would normally get blocked. So remember how I mentioned there's multiple ways to skin a cat? There's multiple ways to go through autophagy. Okay, you can go the AMPK route, you can go the mitogen pathway route. So when we're looking at reishi mushroom, it's pretty darn intriguing to see that it actually stimulates autophagy by suppressing the phosphorylation of this P38 mitogen activated kinase pathway. So this means that we're able to suppress the potential growth of a cancer cell and encourage autophagy via another pathway. So every single one of these foods that I've mentioned to you, you could use in conjunction with one another and they're gonna activate autophagy or at least act upon it in a completely separate way. Now when it comes down to reishi, I do have to mention that I'm a big fan of Four Sigmatic. So I've got these little guys, this is actually one of my favorite ones that I use with them. You see Four Sigmatic actually has a reishi mushroom that's just mixed into hot cocoa. So literally you just mix this up with some milk, mix it up with some water, and you've got reishi mushroom. You mix it up with water, I would technically say that this would break a fast, but it'd be really good if you're on the keto diet or it's really good if you're gonna consume it after you break a fast. So like if I'm fasting, this might be something that I mix in with some almond milk and a little bit of coconut cream and drink before bed, just because it's like a nice hot cocoa and I get the reishi effect. Now obviously reishi mushroom has other effects outside of autophagy. It helps kind of calm you down, helps cool you off, makes it so that you don't feel quite as edgy and allows your brain to activate a little bit more. And I've done other videos from kind of the neurology side of things, but I thought it was interesting. I originally wasn't even gonna mention them in this video, but as I was actually researching and writing out notes, I realize this is a perfect application for it since a lot of my audience fasts. So there you have it. You have four different ways that you can stimulate autophagy and help boost your fast. Green tea, ginger, 
turmeric, curcumin, and some reishi mushroom. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my videos. If you have ideas for more of them, down in the comment section below. See you guys soon.